Hi everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Alex Manos. I am one of the co-founders here at HealthPath and I want to do a short video to introduce the concept of CIFO and the symptoms that have been associated with this condition in the medical literature. So CIFO stands for small intestine fungal overgrowth. So and as the name suggests, this is a condition where we have excessive amounts of fungi in the small intestine. Now the first thing to appreciate is that actually research has shown that 70% of healthy individuals have very low levels of candida albicans in the stomach and the small intestine. So they're kind of meant to be there. CIFO as we've just defined is when these candida have increased in quantity. Symptoms associated with that are unfortunately basically identical to SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. It includes bloating, diarrhea, abdominal pain, excessive gas, and nausea. But in some case studies that have been published in medical journals, we also see things like depression, we see fatigue, and again, those can be caused by numerous other conditions. An underactive thyroid can cause both depression and fatigue anemia could cause fatigue and really we could go on with countless examples. So we can't really rely just on those digestive symptoms. After all we've known for a very long time that those with a compromised immune system, perhaps someone going through chemotherapy or someone who has type 2 diabetes where it's not being very well managed, they, we know they've been at risk of a fungal infection in CIFO for quite some time. But there are some other symptoms or signs that might get us thinking a little bit more around fungi rather than bacteria. Those would include a white coating on the tongue, which might suggest a fungal overgrowth in the oral microbiome. Now bear in mind that the mouth is obviously the beginning of the digestive tract, and also that we know that a subset of people with SIBO, the bacteria that have overgrown in the small intestine, have come from the mouth, the same is likely true for fungi, meaning if you have a fungal overgrowth in the mouth, you are swallowing saliva throughout the day and those fungi are going to travel down into the small intestine. Now some research has suggested that Kansa albicans is quite resistant to stomach acids, but if you also consider that someone could have low stomach acid, what we refer to as hypoclehydria, then we're really starting to increase the possibility that fungi in the mouth has been entering the small intestine creating this small intestine fungal overgrowth. Other signs or symptoms would be vaginal thrush, especially if someone seems to be getting repeated bouts or is just a, is in a chronic condition. Uh, jock itch, a fungal toenail, dandruff, those are all going to be pretty strong signs that maybe there is more of a systemic fungal issue at play here. Now when we think about the prevalence of CIFO, we do actually see in a couple of studies that have looked at approximately 150 individuals that around 25% of participants had either CIFO or had mixed SIBO and CIFO, meaning they both had a bacterial and fungal overgrowth in the small intestine. In the next video, we're going to look at risk factors which might predispose us to CIFO and we'll start to understand why there is a relatively high percentage, I would say, of people with both SIBO and CIFO.